Welcome to another episode of EQ and You. I'm Jen Shirkani, joined by Steve Friedlein. Hello, Steve. Hello, Jen. We are in the middle of a series talking about communication or behavioral style, and we are going to look today at the fourth style, the amiable style. Yes, we've walked through each of the other three, and I think as we kind of build on this grid, it becomes a little more interesting as you start looking at the pace that people like to take, what's important to them, and, and this is kind of the last piece of the puzzle, so looking mm -hmm. forward to it. Yeah, so if you kind of imagine, you know, we're going around the circle here, so we've talked about the analytical style, which is reserved and indirect, the driving style, which is reserved but direct, the expressive style, which is direct but animated, and now the fourth, the whole needs to be filled here for the fourth one, the amiable style, and that is someone who is indirect but also animated. So they share the animation side with the expressive. You can kind of read what's going on by the look on their face. They tend to be a little bit more open about their emotions or what they're feeling. Why do I feel like you're talking about me? Because <laughs> I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the amiable style, the tendency, yes. if I can speak on my own behalf, we, yes. we tend to be supportive, Yes. okay? and a little more casual than the analytical or the driving style. Uh, very people-oriented, I would say. Uh, and that's in, in a way that, you know, like to work effectively with those around us. Being diplomatic, I think, mm -hmm. is another important aspect of what works well for someone whose style is amiable. And I'd like to think we're fairly respectable people. Well, definitely. I mean, this is sort of the team player. I see the amiable style as a little bit of the glue that holds people together because they are real connected to the relationship side of a team. And they pick up, I think, on signals from if something isn't quite working well, they're the first ones to sort of recognize that. You know, so. one, of the, one of the misconceptions, I think, about the amiable style is that when we talk with people about behavior and they'll say, oh, the amiable style, those are the people that get along with everyone. Well, oh. not necessarily the case because we all have those style focuses, tendencies, and blind spots. And I think mm -hmm. as we talk through specifically that blind spot, you might see where the amiable style can get into trouble with their style just as much as anyone else. Right, because the blind spot is not speaking up. Um, I think there is a tendency to go along to get along. And that goes for a while. I have actually witnessed what happens when the go along to get along hits the wall. And then at some point, that's it. You are going to hear from <laughs> <laughs> Both me and your wife are very familiar with what happens that is when we correct. hit the wall. <laughs> that is correct. And I think the, the, what's behind that, that silence sometimes, that unwillingness to speak up, is because relationships are such a focus, the tendency is the relationship. Yeah. There's this desire to not rock the boat. And I think the, the, the dichotomy here is that you rock the boat by not speaking up. Yeah. Really, when it comes right down to it. So what you're trying to avoid, you actually create in a developmental silence that gets in the way of your ability to connect the way you should. Yeah, that's a really good point. Sort of the unintended consequence of yes. not dealing with things sooner yes. and kind yes. of delaying them. Yes. So mm -hmm. there are very positive things about wanting to negotiate, wanting to work effectively with mm -hmm. others. But I think particularly as you look at the driving style and the expressive style mm -hmm. that are more direct, they like to move forward more quickly. So mm -hmm. if the amiable style is sitting back worried about, are the relationships gonna work out? Is everyone okay? I don't wanna share this information. I'm a little uncomfortable putting it out there on the table, mm -hmm. the amiable style, again, may be creating tension because of their unwillingness to move forward in a time that's consistent with the expectation of others. Yeah, that's right. And again, it comes back to EQ because those are important steps. And I think uh, when there is a change, let's say that's about to happen, the driving style might be more thinking about what is the business need for this change or the business right. benefit for this change. But the amiable will be the one to say, well, wait a minute, what about the people impact of this change? And how do we work our way through the messaging of this and the right. support that we might need to lend? Right. So it's a great balance, again, between... <laughs> yes. 
the two yes. opposite styles. Right. Yes. So I might, as a relationship concerned person, be sitting back and go, have you thought about the potential collateral damage of what might happen if you steamroll forward without thinking about how people are going to be impacted? Mm -hmm. And so I, that's a constant need for balance where I'm concerned mm -hmm. is to be, have that concern, that desire for support, that desire to negotiate, but also to be conscious of others' needs to move forward more quickly than me. Yeah. So the, again, all four of these styles play a vital role. The goal is that we have a nice, diverse team with all four styles represented and that ultimately it doesn't really matter what our style is. If we have the emotional intelligence to be aware of our tendencies, aware of the impact we're having on others and the willingness or adaptability to kind of meet in the middle, that is what the ultimate goal is. So I agree 100%. We hope that this has been helpful for you as you work your way through all the other styles you work with every single day and leads to better uh, efficiency and productivity and communication. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.